So I confess, I am not good about labeling plants. And if you had asked me 15 years ago, if that would be me, I would have said no, because I was the person who went on garden tours and got mad because every plant wasn't labeled and I would mumble about it underneath my breath. I understand that frustration. <laughs> However, there are some negatives about labeling plants. One of which that is just an extra step. And when in spring, when you're planting everything, like who has time to pause and write out a label, right? Um, and there are other things. I think most plant labels are really ugly and I don't wanna look across my garden and see plant labels. But I recognize, especially as I realize I'm not going to remember the name of every plant because um, A, I have a lot of plants to keep track of and B, the memory's not as sharp as it used to be. So it's better to have a label, right? So here's a few of the ways that I label plants when I'm labeling them. So the gold standard for me is something like this. This is just an aluminum steak. Now, years ago, uh, when I was the person who was gonna have every single plant in my garden labeled, I invested in a whole bunch of these. So I still have a lot of these, which is why I have this one that has a vertical orientation, um, and because I wanted all my plant labels to match and want them all to look really good. So this is what I bought. I have a lot of these left. I don't like the vertical orientation. They make ones that have plates that run um, horizontally, which is much nicer in my opinion, because who wants to turn, have to turn their head? The other problem with these is that they have this little uh, loop on the top here. And I'll tell you what that's perfect for. That's perfect for sticking your rake in and pulling it right out of the soil, which is why many of the plant tags that I made like this 10, 15 years ago, you can't find anymore or are nowhere near the plant that they were once near. But what I do with these is I don't write on these. This is where the labeler comes in. So these, these labels uh, last really well on here and I just stick it on there. This is a, the labeler that I bought a long, long time ago. This is just, this is a Brother P Touch labeler. This one is probably 15, at least maybe 12 years old, um, but they still make these. and. The nice thing about them is that they haven't inherently changed, so all the tapes are the same. You buy different tapes depending on how wide of a tape you want in there and um, what color you want and what color tape you want and what color ink and all that kind of thing. Uh, so those are fabulous. Now I bought this one. They make some that are sort of uh, handheld things that look more like a big calculator. I bought this one years ago because you can plug it into your computer and then you can do custom fonts and stuff. Now listen, I haven't plugged this into a computer to do that for probably four years, so I don't know if the software is still compatible anymore. And honestly, I can't be bothered with special fonts anymore, so I just use the basic setup that's available within the, within the machine. So I suspect that one of those handheld jobs would work just as well. This particular one works best with a three-quarter inch tape, and I don't have any black on white three-quarter inch tape, so I just made two half-inch ones. So I could just uh, stack the two half inch ones on here um, just to make that label. Uh, these P-Touch labelers are also great as cat toys. If you have a cat, they will be unresistible to them, just so you know. When I buy this label tape, they do make one that's weatherproof, which costs probably, will cost quite a bit more than the regular one. I have never bought that one. And the labels that I made when I bought this label maker, the few that are still in existence out there, are just fine. So I don't think there's any need to buy the weatherproof one. But let's talk about reality here. Is it realistic that you are going to come into your house and spend a whole day making labels and like printing them out on a printer? For me, it's not. I will do it for special things on occasion when I'm bored. But for the most part, a handwritten label is as good as it's gonna get in my garden. So what I have used in the past and I'm gonna put links to all of this in the description. I think everything I'm showing you today, I got on Amazon. So let's talk about the cheapest and one of the better types of labels are, which I don't have an example of here, which is mini blinds. This is a well-known garden tip. A lot of people use this, which is why it is now hard to find mini blinds. But if you can find a set of mini blinds, you can set those, uh, cut those into sections. They make great plant labels. In fact, some of the dahlias that I ordered from places last year, Actually, the tags have been made from mini blinds. So scope out your um, your basements and your local Goodwill stores, things like that, or your um, home stores uh, for you know really cheap mini blinds and cut those apart. That's a great solution. Uh, because mini blinds are hard to find, 
And because I'm extra lazy and don't even wanna to go to the work of finding them, buying them, cleaning them, and then cutting them apart, I often buy these. These are just little, very, very inexpensive plastic labels, very flexible. These are essentially disposable labels. Now, I do um, reuse them sometimes. I try to reuse them, but basically I buy these a thousand at a time. They last me for several years, um, and then I just have a box ready to go. And this is what I will label seedlings with. Um, this is what I label when I'm working out in the vegetable garden and I, and I sow something out there. I will use this. But I'll tell you what, these white labels stick out like crazy. So I don't love these. So there's some disadvantages with this. I will just warn you right now, this is a skinny Sharpie pen. Do not label your labels with this because this does not last, which is why last year by probably July, I had no idea which tomato was which because I like to make neat labels. I don't like real fat marker on there. So I use this, it didn't work at all. Now the regular Sharpies to me, these work just fine on there. Uh, other things, you know, there is that garden marker that a lot of people swear by. I don't really like that cause it's so fat, but it will not go away. So that works. And then also um, pencil. Somebody sent me um, a viewer, very kind viewer sent me some indelible pencils and they're fabulous. If you like to write with a pencil, they work really well too. With all these markers, one thing you gotta note is that you gotta let them dry because everything smears right away, unless you're using that pencil, which will smear too. So whatever you write on these plastic things, don't touch them right away. But for me, this is pretty simple, ugly, but simple. So because I got sort of sick of these white labels and I just didn't wanna see these little like white, almost like tombstones all over the garden, I thought let's switch to black. So I went on and looked for black labels on Amazon and found this guy, which is basically the exact same thing as this white one, just in black. A couple problems with this. It's a little shiny, which means nothing's gonna stay on there too well. Um, pencil does not work at all on this particular one. A couple of things that do work. A silver Sharpie will work kind of. You know, it, it sort of works. What you have to do with black though, is you really have to think about acrylic paint pens. Some of these that I ordered came with a paint pen, which was completely useless, but I did buy this pack of acrylic paint pens. You have to look for ones that are waterproof. So this one is sunproof and waterproof. Now it looks pretty good. It's nice and thin, which I like, but we're gonna let it dry for a little bit here and then we're gonna test it. The next black label I got was two, essentially two lengths of the same thing which is, I have a, I think it's a four inch length and a six inch length of the same thing, which is um, just kind of a stiffer label, uh, skinnier though. I don't really like the skinnier ones, but this will be a little bit nicer uh, for tucking in certain places. And what's nice about this is it has a shiny side and a dull side. And in my experience, it's always best to write on the dull side. So let's just give that, let's just give that a test with a couple of things. Pencil didn't work great on these either, but on the dull side, it worked better. And then the last kind that I bought uh, in terms of black ones was because like I said, I'm starting to realize that tilting your head sideways is not optimal. I bought some of these and these are, um, you know, little tea labels. Uh, I thought these would actually be really nice for seed trays because they'll tuck down in there so they won't stick up high, but it'll be much easier to see the labels. So I envision using these for things that I'm growing from seed, quick annuals, um, maybe test plants. Although with test plants, I usually, if someone sends me a plant to test, I usually do keep the label that came with it because then I have all the information right there. But these are not really permanent solutions. They're sort of semi-permanent solutions for me. Um, you know, the one thing I just got tired of with this was making a label like this, an expensive, nice label for a plant, although you can reuse these and just stick new tape over the top of it, was that invariably I'd make a label and then that plant died. It was like like the, the kiss of death to stick a label on a plant because then it would be dead. The last thing I tried this year was the, I've been using these these labels that that kind of work into themselves for my dahlia tubers for several years.
but I in the past have bought colorful ones. And the goal with colorful ones was I thought, um, and I think they had like five different colors and it'd be easier for me to find the tubers when they came out of storage if they were sort of bulk all under one color. So all the cafe LA's were pink and all the Penn Hill watermelons were blue. And of course you'd reuse some of the colors, but it narrowed it down a little bit. The problem with that is that I kept seeing those color. I mean, I'd see that for a long time in the garden. I thought, well, I don't want, if I don't want white labels in my garden, I sure as heck don't want neon pink. So this year I went out and I bought what I thought was gonna be soil colored. These come on a big roll, same thing. Uh, and I thought these would be sort of soil colored, so less offensive in the garden. These are not soil colored. Maybe this brown one is the best of them. But you can see they're all, you know, I mean, you're gonna see these too. And the other issue with these is, I think you can see they're quite quite shiny, which immediately struck me as an, as an issue. I think these are really meant for nurseries that are gonna print a label and stick a label on these or because I don't even know, you might be able to actually print right on these. I don't know, I don't have a setup to do that. So that's not possible for me anyway. But I'll tell you what, what I like about these is that they're on this roll. Instead of all the loose ones, I had a big bag. I love these on this roll and you just rip them off as you need them. And then there's little, you know, replaceable tape. Uh, these did work okay though for storing dahlias. Uh, the only thing with them is, again, you have to write on them with a Sharpie because the pencil won't work on these either. And it works pretty good, but you definitely have to let it dry because it'll smear. So that's my dahlia storage tuber method, at least for now. Um, I just put those around a stem and then I just leave them on there and hopefully they last the whole season and then I don't have to relabel when I dig them up in fall. Okay, let's go back and just check on our progress of everything here. All right, as always, let me know what you think. Uh, links to everything that I showed you is below in case you're interested in checking any of them out. But I know you all have great labeling solutions and I find labeling to be one of those really personal things. People tend to like what they like. So I wanna hear what it is that you like uh, and share it with us all because there's probably a labeling system that works for everybody somewhere. All right, have a great day in your garden. See you soon, bye.